in an era of Avengers and Marvel DC movies, I may be <laughs> I may be lagging behind in popular pop culture. However, I've always believed that movies or any art form have a significant impact on our thinking. Sometimes a line in a book might remain in our mind throughout our lives. So as you graduate, do not let your creative side fade away. In our profession, creativity has led to landmark constitutional judgments. Your life as a lawyer is also enriched by your own explorations outside the law. In my own life, I made it a habit to read literature other than law textbooks. And I can share that it has helped me in my career, firstly as a lawyer and then as a judge. As a Chief Justice, I often revert to what Atticus Finch, the protagonist in Harper Lee's classic To Kill a Mockingbird, said, and I quote him, but there is one way in this country in which all men are created equal. There is one human institution that makes a pauper the equal of a Rockefeller, the stupid man the equal of an Einstein, and the ignorant man the equal of any college president. That institution, gentlemen, is a court. Our courts have their faults, as does any human institution. But in this country, our courts are the great levelers, and in our courts, all men are created equal. Justice Elena Kagan, a judge of the United States Supreme Court, once quoted a line from the movie Spider-Man in her judgment, which goes like, in this world with great power, there must also come great responsibility. Thus, while your graduation brings a feat of happiness and joy, there must also be a realization of self-responsibility that wherever you go, you strive towards healing the world and the lives of the people around you. Nalsar is celebrating its silver jubilee. It is an achievement for the institution to have shaped the lives of so many students over the years. I congratulate the leadership of the university for this impressive achievement. Institutions of every kind play a crucial role in society. Running a university is about shaping the future of the country as we train young minds. The Silver Jubilee moment also gives us a chance to reflect on the larger issues concerning our higher education institutions. There may be many issues in terms of policy decision-making on higher education, but I wish to reflect on the state of higher education from a philosophical perspective, from the lens of empathy. I have chosen this lens because I believe that empathy is an essential ingredient in the law, and it is what separates a just society from an unjust one. It is a critical component of justice and facilitates in promoting a compassionate view of justice. For instance, the Supreme Court deals with a large number of cases arising out of motor accidents claims. The judges often look at the human side of the case through a lens of empathy while balancing the technical requirements. In that sense, Empathy is not a luxury, but a necessity. Empathy can help break down barriers towards justice. That is why we must also understand education through the lens of empathy. In our education institutions today, we tend to focus a lot on excellence. We are taught that our lives can be better only if we excel in our studies or in our professional life. However, education can only be complete if we nurture the values of empathy and compassion. Our educational institutions must not limit themselves to promoting competition among students, but also shape their outlook towards life where empathy 
is a crucial component and element. Excellence in life cannot go without empathy. Lack of empathy in educational institutions has adverse effects on students. I have been emphasizing on the mental health of lawyers, but equally important is the mental health of students. Not only must our educational curriculum inculcate a sense of compassion among students, but the academic leaders must also be sensitive to the concerns of students. When students leave their home, it becomes the responsibility of educational institutions to establish a bond of institutional friendship with students. We must also realize that different students face different challenges. Only recently, I read about the suicide of a Dalit student at IIT Mumbai, IIT Bombay. It reminded me about the suicide of an Adivasi student in National Law University, Odisha, last year. My heart goes out to the family members of these students. But I have also been wondering where our institutions are going wrong, that the students are forced to give up their precious lives in these instances. Incidents of suicide of students from marginalized communities are becoming common. These numbers are not just statistics. They are stories sometimes of centuries of struggle. I believe that if we wish to address this issue, the first step is to acknowledge and recognize the problem. Professor Sukhdev Thorat, one of our senior educationists in the country, has noted that if almost all those who have died by suicide, in particularly situations like Dalits and Adivasis, then it shows a pattern which we must question. In our journey of 75 years since independence, we have been focused on creating institutions of eminence. But more than that, we need institutions of empathy, a term I read in a news article. Some of you may be wondering why the Chief Justice of India is speaking on this issue. Well, because I think the issue of discrimination is directly linked with the lack of empathy in educational institutions. Furthermore, judges cannot shy away from social realities. Instances of judicial dialogues are common across the globe. When the Black Lives Matter movement emerged in the United States after the murder of George Floyd, all nine judges on the Washington Supreme Court, the highest court in the state of Washington in the United States, released a joint statement addressed to the judiciary and the legal community on the degradation and devaluation of black lives in the United States. Harvard Law School professor Michael Klarman notes that history tends to forget the equally groundbreaking work that several civil rights lawyers did outside the courtroom in educating the black community about their rights under the Constitution. In similar ways, judges in India have a crucial role in making a dialogue with the society inside and outside the courtrooms to push for social change. As Chief Justice, apart from my core judicial work, which I take very seriously, and administrative duties, my effort is also to throw light on the structural issues which confront our society. Therefore, promoting empathy must be the first step which education institutions ought to take. Nurturing empathy can end the culture of eliteness and exclusion. This can be done by starting with small steps, allotment of hostels based on entrance marks, which leads to caste-based segregation, putting out a public list of marks along with social categories, asking for the marks of Dalit and Adivasi students publicly to humiliate them, making a mockery of their English and physical appearances, stigmatizing them as inefficient, not acting on incidents of abuse and bullying, not providing a support system, or reducing or stopping their fellowships, normalizing stereotypes through jokes, 
are some of the basic things which every educational institution must stop. In other words, practicing empathy is not just a personal attribute, but it requires institutional change, institutional change in every walk of life within and outside the judiciary, including in our educational institutions.